Welcome to the Higher Self Podcast. My name is Pete Gilfill, and I'm here with my producer, Sean Smith. Good morning, Sean. Morning, Pete. Oh, man, I'm bummed out today. That never happens. Why are you bummed I, out? I know I'm never bummed out, but I'm bummed out. I told you I was going to get the opportunity to, to test drive that new, all uh, all new Mach-E. You know? yeah. and, and I ordered this thing. So it came in, and this is the Mach-E GT with the Performance Edition on it. So this, it is a beautiful car, right? 21-inch wheels, it's beautiful gray. Uh, the interior is incredible, and I got to drive it. And it was, it was probably the best vehicle I've ever driven in my life, Sean. Let me guess, your wife made, made you send it back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so she saw, I said, this is the greatest car I've ever driven in my life. I, I really want this. And she goes, um, I think I'm looking at the window sticker. It's $73,000. I, I don't see you really need a, a $73,000 sports car. Uh, so, so the car went away and I am so bummed because it, again, was it, Ford has done an amazing job. The performance in terms of driving it was probably one of the best driving experiences. And I've been to driving schools and all that kind of stuff. And it's just, it, it's the steering is just on point, the acceleration, uh, it, it is, it is just tuned perfect. And, uh, but anyway, so I'm bummed out. Yeah. But I am excited. We got a very special guest. One of my favorite candidates that I ever worked with uh, is going to be joining us today. So welcome, Brock Warner. It's great to have you here. Yeah, thank you. Why do I feel like you say that about everybody? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, no, no. We, we, I think, had a great connection. And I am so excited to have you here. You know, we worked with each other uh, last year uh, from that standpoint. And you came to me as a corporate executive. And yeah. and kind of saying, hey, I, I want to learn about this franchise. I'm not so sure. I got this good corporate career from that standpoint. And so let's let's start at the beginning. So you came to me and you said, hey, you know, Pete, I want to learn about this. Franchise. I'm not so sure. What what were you thinking? I mean, you have this very successful. You've been a you were a vice president of an organization. So so what motivated you to look at or consider investing in a franchise? Yeah, it was, I mean, it was several things. One of them was COVID. You know, I was helping run a company. And um, as a highly compensated individual in that company, uh, I was I was an obvious let go when, uh, <laughs> when when that company had to downsize. And, you know, sure. I don't bemoan that fact at all. They were right. But, um, I, you know, I looked at that and thought, OK, um, there's one reason yeah. <laughs> to hire yourself so you can you can let yourself go when you want. Um, and then the second really was, you know, I'm I'm getting older. Uh, I have the, uh, the, the genes that allows me to have, you know, hair and still dark hair, but I'm, I'm in my mid fifties. And so I started looking at thinking, you know, it's going to be a point where someone's going to say, Hey Brock, it's time to hit the pasture. And, uh, I'm not a retirement guy. So my dad retired at 80. Uh, I have no intention of retiring. So that, that kind of put me in a place of checking things out. Yeah. So for you, it was this idea that, hey, you had to create something for yourself. You had to create your next opportunity. Uh, you, you had all that great business acumen and stuff like that. And then also you wanted to, uh, I guess, leverage your experience to, to build something, right? Because you're not a guy that's going to just hang it up and, and retire. You, you got to be doing something. So so we go through the process and you ended up investing in what franchise concept? Yeah, Mighty Dog Roofing. Yeah, Mighty Dog Roofing. Brands. Now, so, yeah. All right. So you come this idea that, hey, OK, I'm going to I'm going to create an opportunity for myself and you invest in a roofing franchise. How, how the yeah. heck do you go from I don't know what I'm going to do in terms of a business to a, a roofing franchise? Well, you know, you and I discussed I was uh, you asked a couple of really good questions. One of them was, do you really care what you do? if you own a company? And my answer was, no, I, that doesn't matter to me. I, I like growing things. So let's go for that. The other thing I was intrigued by was home services in general. And so you helped me with that and got me in front of about four or five different um, concepts. And, you know, at, at the end of the day with Mighty Dog, there were a couple of things. One, I love the ticket. Um, that, that alone kind of got me excited. I'm, I've been a whale hunter in my sales career. And so sure. I like big tickets. Yeah. Um, and so that was one of them. And then, and then, you know, getting to know horsepower brands, it became more and more obvious that I could okay. be semi-absentee, which I know we're going to talk about. 
Yeah, sure. So, so you decide to do roofing, and it, the average transaction or ticket uh, yep. is just, yep. is desirable. Number two, it's a need; it's not a want. I mean, if I got to right. get my roof done, uh, from that standpoint, and and uh, it, it's interesting. So, you know, there's a lot of competition out there, a lot of competition in roofing. I mean, it, you know, you talk about roofing, they go, "Oh, there's so many roofers," but yep. Mighty Dog. It's special, right? How do you come into a market where there's all these roofers and separate yourself from everybody else? Well, I, you know, I think there's a good a good model there. One one is heavy branding. Um, two is it's a really disparate marketplace, and so you have guys that uh, we affectionately call Chuck in a truck, and and then you have large national or regional players. Um, but there's always a marketplace. You know, I think one of the things one of the lies about in general about life is that um, scarcity exists. I just don't believe that. I believe there are opportunities. I looked at the numbers. I could grab a portion of the market. And so we'll do that through our values, through customer experience. That's really where I focus is can I kind of change the way people expect to be treated by a contractor and, and a roofing contractor specifically? Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about Mighty Dog Roofing because they have got great branding. I mean, I, I love the superhero. I, I had yeah, uh, the founders, yeah. Zach and Josh, on the other day, and they were telling us about horsepower brands, which we'll get to. But, I yeah. mean, I like uh, the branding. And the other thing is, is that you guys have, uh, for lack of better terms, a superior experience, right? Because you guys come in, not like a normal roofer, you have a whole diagnostic kit that you can evaluate my roof probably more so than most roofers. Is that right? Yeah, it is. And it really starts, you know, I would say from the ground because we're going to start uh, with the drone. So we're going to drone the roof, which is going to pick up an awful lot of information that you don't normally get from someone scrambling on a roof. Yeah. Uh, and then and then we've got, to, to your point, a, a kit that we use that has about six or seven different diagnostic tools in it. So we can really dial in and then we create out of that a, a video. And, and that's what the customer gets to see. So I was on your roof. And now I'm going to show you everything that you trusted me to do. Uh, so it really kind of affirms that that idea of integrity and then all the other values we believe. I wish your mighty dog was here uh, in Naperville because we have to get a roof done, right? And and so uh, we had somebody come and give us an estimate. Then oh, we really liked the guy, but but didn't do any of the things that you guys do, like the like yeah. the uh, uh, measuring the temperature of the roof to see, you know, if you got issues there. The little microscope thing you can look in through holes to see if it's going through the base to the base. I mean, it, yep. it's it, it really separates you guys. And then you guys are very professional. Like what I read was is that you guys will put like an apron around the house to catch all that debris, and that's pretty yep. cool. What you guys do there. Yeah, it is. And it's, you know, it is something that's that's in the industry. We happen to, because uh, we're, you know, Mighty Dog superheroes, we brand it as a cape. But boy, that thing goes up. It's well branded. So from the street, you know who's doing the roof. Uh, and it takes care of the landscaping for the customer. It also makes it easy on our crews to be able to clean up, which they yeah. love. So yeah. Yeah. It, it's a it's a really effective tool. Now, you guys, because you're part of Horsepower Brands and Mighty Dog, you guys get special treatment when it comes to purchasing power of the roof, the, the uh, shingles or the, the supplies, but also you carry extra warranty because you're part of that organization, right? You can offer customers extra warranty? Yeah, we can. So, uh, you know, as you mentioned, I always talk about, you know, we're kind of locally owned, but we're nationally backed. So it gives us that that uh, purchasing power and that advantage in, in negotiating contracts with the suppliers. And then to your point, uh, Owens Corning uh, gives us a platinum preferred contractor status right as we get going, which is the top 2% in the country. And so because of that, we're the only ones, I mean, there's, there's others in town, but we're the only ones who can offer that, that lifetime warranty, which is really strong. Right. So you offer, for lack of better terms, a superior warranty because you guys are part of an organization. You give them a better mm -hmm. experience uh, from a standpoint. So, so great stuff. So you have been uh, going since I think it was like August or September of last year. Is that right? Yeah, September, kind of okay. mid-September. I tell yeah. them when we started October because those first two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, and yeah. So I got to ask, how's it going so far? It is going really well. Uh, and we hit our projections, which I really didn't think we'd hit. I mean, I, yeah. I was fine with that because we're getting going. But my guys nailed it out of the box. So the first quarter of last year, which was October to December for us, was awesome. And then we really kicked off strong in what should be storm months. 
Um, so we're heading into, you know, a strong season for roofing in general. And, and I'm really excited about what's going on. Well, I know you guys are in Nashville and I, I hear that more storms are starting to track through that area with the way in which the global changes and stuff like that. But so that that's probably good business for you. Uh, we don't like to see any yeah. kind of bad events happen, but, but certainly uh, that helps and all the building and, and everything that's going on in Nashville. It's just, you, you got a great market. So, yeah, thank you. so let's talk a little bit about horsepower brands because they're the ones really yeah. behind mighty dog and they provide the infrastructure, the support to launch you. So, so how did mighty dog do in terms of helping you launch your business, get you ready training, and then, and then kind of the marketing to launch it, how, how'd they do? Yeah. You know, they did really well. And I have to say, you know, I was one of the initial say 10 that, that came on board. So there was certainly some things to, to learn. The thing I love about the organization, quite frankly, is, is that they're scaling up to support their franchisees rather than trying to stay lean to just kind of sell it, sell the brand. Yeah. Right. And so we have so much support from, full groups that are supplementing. So what that means in the roofing industry is, is you file an insurance claim. I have the full backing of a group to be able to go with, go up against the insurers when they decide they don't want to cover your roof and it should be covered. And so I get to go in the market and say, I'm going to, I'm going to fight for my customers. It's, it's a really a, strong yeah. piece. Yeah. 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 I visited their headquarters of horsepower brands last week. Yeah. And it's absolutely amazing how many people they just keep adding people. I mean, yep. they've only been around for about a year and a half and, yep. and they've got a couple hundred employees. They just keep getting space, but I like it. They put resources towards helping you, whether it's the supplementing group, the call center, the digital marketing. I mean, it seems to be kind of the complete package to support franchisees as they're going for it. Yeah, it is. And I'll tell you the other thing that's really uh, encouraging, I guess, with relationship with horsepower brands. They could have spun out, for instance, a gutter company, but they didn't. They're going to roll that into Mighty Dog Roofing. They could have spun out a solar company, but they didn't. They're going to roll that into the Mighty Dog concept. So it really gives me the, I, the opportunity inside of Mighty Dog to have three or four different uh, franchises, if you will, verticals yeah. uh, to, to grow my business. And that, you know, they didn't have to do that. I yeah. mean, and I think might, they arguably might have been smarter to do something else, right? Well, I, I think what they're really trying to do is get franchisees that have very large revenue, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and and yeah. so that's a way in which they can do that is having multiple different services. Uh, it makes a lot of sense to me. So and and their success is based on your success. And so I right. think they, they really want you to be strong, good revenue, good profits uh, so that you can continue to, to develop. Right. So, so you, you were an executive, you had the, this great role. Unfortunately, you get thrown into career transition. You have to figure out your next thing. You know, so what advice would you give to other executives that are thinking, well, maybe I should look at uh, investing in a franchise? What, what advice would you give somebody that's thinking about that? Yeah, I mean, at first, I think to understand it's, it's a reality. Uh, Pete, you really helped me kind of understand that, kind of look at, you know, that next 10 to 15 years of, um, you called it a work optional lifestyle down the road, which which right now that's not what it is, but yeah. but it will be, and I'm and I see that. Um, I think you really have to have the right people working for you. So I, I ended up with a GM that has just been top notch. In fact, half of Mighty Dog would love for them for him to move to their territory. So yeah. I've got that. So I think hiring good people is really strong, and yeah. then you've got to have the backing of the franchise. If, yeah. if they can provide the support for a semi-absentee, if they believe that model, then I think you've got a winning combination. So then it's all about people, right? It's about finding the right business partner and a franchisor. And then when you have your own team, finding the right people. That's that right. And whether you're a corporate executive or you're a business owner, it is all about people, right? And yeah, taking good always, care of them and right? support. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So, all right. So you have started the business and you were executive yeah. before. And now you are, I think you told me you're, you're starting to transition to what we call executive model semi absentee So you're going to go yep. back in. It sounds like you got another great uh, corporate role as a VP for a company. Yep. So you're going to, you're going to do that and you're going to have the franchise on the side, you know, so you're going to have to watch over your business. So have you kind of put together a plan of how you're going to do that? Cause I, I know you got to kind of coordinate. <laughs> you're going to, you, you only have so many hours in the day. Have you kind of thought about yeah. how you're going to manage the business uh, as you do both? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, early on when I first came in, I had, I was corporate, then I was out of corporate. Now I'm going back into corporate. Yeah. Um, so I at least got to see kind of the beginning to see whether my idea was going to work. And it does. I, I'm handling all the, all the financials. 
I'm handling all the marketing and the franchise or relationships. And my GM has basically got everything else operationally. Okay. So those are the things that I see that I can do from six to eight in the morning and six to eight in the evening. I can do it in a lunch hour. I, what I want to be able to do is in all integrity, have my employer know they're getting my hours or getting my best hours. Yeah. Um, and then, then I'm creating more best hours for my company as well. Yeah. So it's clearly uh, understanding what your role is going to do and being able to delegate it to everybody else and then monitor and stuff like that. You can do that in your off hours. Uh, so I, I think that's a great strategy. Um, and as you look uh, towards the future, you know, we're, we're starting to see now the economy might be changing here a little bit. Yeah. We will say the, the R word. Uh, interest <laughs> rates are going to be going up. How do yeah. you see that impacting uh, a, as we go forward, the, the economy, the your business from that standpoint? Yeah, you know, it's 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 starting to get top of mind, right? Trying to kind of figure it out whether that's going to happen or not. And, and if it is, then, okay, what's next? And so... You know, you've got two different ways in the roofing industry to make money. Well, <laughs> you've got lots of different ways to make money. Yeah. But you've got in, in residential, you have retail and you have storms. Yeah. If storms hit, well, then people are going to have to have roofs. And so no matter what's going on, roofs are always turning. Roofs turn regardless of the economic situation uh, at a rate of 7 to 8% of all, um, excuse me, 7 to 8% of homes are going to turn every year. Okay. So that's been true through all kinds of economic um, realities. So there's still that to get in place. And then, you know, as a result of the marketing, as a result of being here for a while, you know, we'll, we'll I think we'll still be able to grab that market yeah. share that's happening, regardless of what's going on in the economy. But yeah. it is a reality. For sure. Yeah, no, I think it is. And but I think you're positioned well. Again, it's a, it's a need, it's not a want, and it is recession, yeah. as much as you could say recession resistant. So yeah, uh, yep. absolutely. Now, if somebody's thinking about investing in a business, all right, what characteristics do you think it's important for them to have to be a business owner? We already kind of talked about people <laughs> skills, right? Yeah. But what else, what other skills do you think are important to have as you look at becoming an entrepreneur? Well, you know, I, I think it's philosophical, right? It's, there's lots of people that will disagree kind of with what I'm about to say. But, I, you know, I think, one, you've got to be a visionary. Now, that may be to be semi-absentee, right? Because you can be a really good operator to be an owner-operator. But I think you've got to, you've got to be, able to, be able to cast a vision uh, to move forward with. I think you've got to be able to trust your gut. Yeah. And that is something I really believe in. And then the third thing really for me is the ability to kind of capture data, but then be able to make decisions. Because you, if you get into too much analysis, you're just not going to be able to move fast enough to be able to um, you know, capture the market that you want to grab. So um, those are the, those are kind of the three things that I think about more often than anything so else. So if I got it clear, right, you kind of know where you want to go, right? Yep. You got to leverage that internal gut to kind of navigate through it. And then you got to yep. measure with data and, and make decisions because business owners yeah. make decisions, right? Right. And you got to, you got to know you're going to fail, right? I yeah. mean, you're going to, you're going to make a decision that's yes. going to go the wrong way. Yep. But if you can have that kind of 10 year, 15 year view of reality, it, it takes the, uh, takes a sting out of some of those losses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. I always like to ask, what's the best piece of advice anybody's ever given you? Oh my gosh. Um, man, Pete. Uh, I, I, you know what? So I, I took the Colby tests. I don't know if you're familiar with the Colby yeah. tests. Yeah. And back to my point, Kathy Colby told me in her note to me, she said, trust your gut always and don't let anyone else tell you you can't. And so that's really helped me as I've moved forward in the decision making process you started to put me through yeah. you know, almost a year ago. Yeah, well, I think that's right. You can look at all the numbers, but at some point you just gotta you gotta kind of you gotta look yeah. inside and go, is this is this the thing for me? All right. Yep. And what is your favorite book? I always like to <laughs> learn about new books. What is your favorite book you you've read? Yeah, this one might not be new because it's it's pretty popular, but I, I absolutely love Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willings. I, I that book yeah. is has been yeah, I read it three or four years ago. And it has helped me manage people. It's helped me kind of 
take um, the ownership that I'm responsible for and really let it lay on me while holding my people accountable to the things I'm training them to. So, that's awesome. yeah. Ex- that, okay. That extreme, sure. would you say extreme? Extreme ownership. Okay. Jocko extreme Willis. ownership. I'll, I'll go get that. Yep. That sounds yep. great. So perfect. Yep. Well, congratulations on all your success with your Mighty Dog franchise. Um, it it sounds pretty cool. Congratulations on your new executive position. And I can't Thank wait you. to continue to watch your success. And uh, maybe we can do another check-in in, in about a year or something, because I'd love to see how it's progressing. But uh, yeah, again, congrats fun. on all your success. Yeah. Yeah, Pete, thank you. I appreciate the time. Yeah, thank you so much. All right. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Hire Yourself podcast. For more resources, check out our website at hireyourself.com. And remember to subscribe to this podcast to receive each episode. Please leave us a rating, and we'd love to hear your feedback or suggestions for topics.